Hello everyone, welcome to English Wizards. My name is Gokul Krishnan. Today we'll be discussing the June 2023 UGC NET JRF examination shift one question paper live. Before we proceed to the discussion, here is something for you. You can access this question paper from our website www.englishwizards.co.in I would recommend you to do this because from our website you can attend these questions in the same pattern in which the UGC has conducted the examination. You will have to complete the paper to examination in 120 minutes or 2 hours and after submitting you can check your answers with detailed explanation of the same. This is available for free in our website. So let's get started. All right, um, welcome everyone. Today we'll be discussing uh, shift one of paper two from uh, the 2023 June UGC net JR of examination. Um, so uh, what you see in your screen right now is uh, our, the website of English Wizards where you will be able to open the question paper, previous year question papers and solve them. So, uh, Today, I'll be solving the question papers along with you uh, from our website. So all the, all the questions are uh, there in the website and you'll get explanation for each question after you've submitted your answer. So also, uh, you'll, you can solve this question paper in real time, meaning we have set a two hour uh, time slot to, for you to solve the questions. So um, I think we're good to go. We have uh, six participants. I think we're good to go. So let's start with the first question. So uh, what I want you to do is, because we have around 100, we have 100 questions to solve today, I don't think uh, I can give you much time to come up with the answer. So I want you to be quick. Uh, please use your chat box to give me the answer. And please make sure that you stick till the end because we'll be solving 100 questions today. So I think we're good to go. Let's start with the first question. Which among the following books is not written by Edward Seth? Edward Seth, as you know, is a post-colonial thinker or a critic or a scholar. So which among the following is not written by Edward Seth is a question. We have the options on late style music and literature against the grain, the text, the, the world, the text and the critic, image, music, text, the question of Palestine. C, you've given C as the answer. So let's, let's try with C. C is the right answer. And uh, who wrote this particular work, Image, Music and Text? Image, Music and Text is written by Roland Barthes. Roland Barthes is a uh, post-1950 uh, literary critic or a cultural critic. So this work is written by Roland Barthes, not Edward Seth. Let's move to the next question. Question number two. The love song of J. Alfred Pitfork names the following figures, Ezra Pound, Michelangelo, Valerie Elliott, Hamlet, Walt Whitman. Give me the answer. If given B as the answer, meaning you've chose Michelangelo and Hamlet. Let's see. You are right. So, uh, Love Song of J. Alfred Pitfork is a poem by T.S. Eliot, the same person who wrote the, who wrote the poem the wasteland so um this poem was first published in 1915 and it is considered to be Eliot's one of the most influential work and probably one of the most discussed work of t.s Eliot, along with the wasteland all right so let's move to the next question which among the following is no which among the following is true about religious lace religious lace is a textbook which among the following is true about the work? John Dryden wrote religious lazy. Religious lazy strongly criticizes, it strongly criticizes the Anglican church. Religious lazy means a layman's faith. It was published in 1690. Religious lazy was a philosophical religious prostrate. Give me the answer. Give me the answer. Let's try A and C. B is the right answer. So, uh, Religio Lacy is a work written by John Dryden. 
Dryden was a prominent English poet, uh, literary critic, and playwright who lived from 1631 to 1700. The title Religio Lacy, which is a text by John Dryden, translates to a layman's faith. The term lacy refers to layman or individuals who are not part of the clergy. Now, Religio, the work Religio Lacy is a philosophical religious prose treatise, and it explores religious beliefs and questions, discussing topics such as existence of God, the nature of faith, and the relationship between reason and religion. All right, it does not strongly criticize the Anglican Church. All right, let's move to the next. It's supported, right? Yeah, it does. You're right. It doesn't criticize the Anglican Church, but supports. Next question. This is a match. The following question. You have the options right before you, but take a look. Ten, ten seconds. Take a look at the question. See, I'll tell you how to answer this. This is uh, see, Antonio Gramsci is very popular. So if you're preparing for a net exam. I always tell my students few terms that are associated with Antonio Gramsci. Very important. Antonio Gramsci and hegemony are connected. Hegemony is defined, most often defined by Antonio Gramsci. Next is Pierre Bourdieu. Cultural capital is Pierre Bourdieu's main terrain of work. All right. Now, see, you may not be familiar with Dick Hebdige, though you should be. It could be a possibility that you may not be familiar, but you should be familiar with Raymond Williams, right? And Raymond Williams is associated with popular culture. So, if you study cultural studies, the first person you would come come across would probably be Raymond Williams. No doubt about that. And Raymond Williams and popular culture are connected. So that leaves us with Dick Hebdige, who is connected to subculture. So that is how you should answer this question. Let's see. Yes. So when you get matched the following questions, there is a chance that you may not be familiar with all the all the options, all the all the given uh, figures in the question. But if you know at least two, you would be able to answer, and then you can uh, you can make that process of answering easier. All right. Next question. Again, this is a connect question. Jo we have George Meredith, George Eliot. Charlie Brown Day and uh, William Mackey's Thackeray. All right. Can you can you give me the answer? Which? All right. Okay. Just just go go through the names and we'll we'll come to it. So George. George Meredith wrote Ivan Harrington. All right, this novel tells the story of Ivan Harrington, a young man who strives to overcome his humble origins and gain social acceptance. George Meredith. That's what he said. Uh, somebody has turned their mic on. Can you take care to you know turn the mic off? All right. Next is George Eliot. George Eliot wrote scenes. <laughs> Clerical life. Somebody has turned the mic on again. Mustina, uh, Mustina, can you turn your mic off? Cool. Thank you. Now, George Eliot wrote Scenes of Clerical Life. This is a collection of three short stories set in the fictional town of Milby. All right. Next, we have Charlotte Brondet. Charlie Brown Day is somebody you should be familiar with, and Charlie Brown Day wrote The Professor. This novel follows the story of William Crimsworth, an English man who becomes a professor in Brussels. Next is William Macpie Thackeray, who wrote The Virginians, set during the American Revolution. So that leaves us with the first option. Yes. Next question. Which of the four, what is the chrono, correct chronological sequence of the following English non fictional prose writers according to their years of birth? This you should give me the answer. Give me the answer. 
this is to take take see i'll tell you how to answer this question all right you should be able to first place these writers in their respective era all right if you take uh, arnold for example arnold falls in the during, arnold wrote during the victorian era all right so if you can place these writers in their respective era it will be simple for you to answer the question that is how you can easily tackle these kind of case, kinds of questions all right so give me the answer Just try with okay b b is a right answer first come yes b is a right answer first come francis bacon bacon was an essayist who was born in 1561 sometime uh, during the shakespearean era plus or minus now we have joseph addison the addison was an essayist uh, who ran the spectator magazine so magazines naturally follows essays and post shakespearean era if you can kind of build that logical connection this becomes easy next is charles lamb charles lamb wrote uh, was born in 1775 and uh, he uh, wrote sometime during the romantic age again plus and minus sometime during the romantic age next comes matthew arnold who wrote during the victorian era who matured during the uh, zenith of victorian era and he was born in 1822 and finally it's virginia woolf who was born in 18 82 because virginia woolf wrote during the first half of the 20th century so if you can place these writers in their respective era this becomes very easy now let's go to the next question in which of the jane austen it which novel of jane austen is captain frederick wentworth a character you should have direct awareness about the clear awareness about the novels to answer this not an easy question if you can't identify the novel can you take a guess or if you know the answer please give you have 10 seconds d somebody has given d as answer let's see yes d is the answer persuasion is the answer so this captain frederick wentworth is a character in the novel persuasion by uh, jane austen in the story this character is a naval officer who previously had a romantic relationship with the protagonist and eliot So to answer this question, you should know who are the characters in persuasion. It's not easy to eliminate or know other method to answer this. All right. Next question. Sesho, which Sesho? Peridin and D. Sesho. Sesho delivered his series of lectures on general linguistics. Later published after his death as Course in General Linguistics. at the university of dash easiest question this exam i would say quick be quick please so this is what see see is the answer geneva is the answer university of geneva uh, he delivered this particular lecture that later turned to be an essay which is prescribed in most of the university syllabi you ha- will have sessure at some point in your academic life to study and uh, Sesher is a figure we often discuss in our net class. Uh, his uh, important contributions, etc. Lang and Perrault. We discuss Sesher during the, I mean, Sesher in the module of structuralism most often. Sesher is also an important linguistic and a structuralist figure or a pre-structuralist who led the way to structuralism. I would say. All right. Ninth question. Some of the some of the following terms are integral to new criticism tension mirror stage irony polyphony and paradox you eliminate mirror stage now itself because mirror stage you have to quickly and recognize that mirror stage is something related to psychoanalysis contributed by jack lekan mirror stage is already eliminated now what is the answer give me the answer question number 9 what are the words okay somebody has is it c c for this case? okay c all right let's see if this c c is a right answer so tension irony and paradox are terms associated with new criticism so if you uh, take a good look at the new criticism module you should be able to answer this tension refers to the conflicts and contradictions or opposing elements within a literary work 
that contribute to its complexity and meaning. Now, irony, irony, you would be already familiar. Irony is a literary device that in, in, involves a contrast between what is expected and what happens at the end. Paradox is a statement or situation that appears contradictory or absurd, but may reveal a deeper truth or insight. All right, so the, the, these three words are associated with new criticism, not polyphony and not mirror stage. Polyphony uh, is a contribution of Mikhail Bakhtin. Now, Adam in Adam bead of George Eliot is a dash. This is again a direct question. See, the problem, not a problem, but the tough thing with direct questions are that you should know the exact fact. Adam in Adam bead of George Eliot is a dash. Anybody? We have 16 people. I, somebody should at least take a guess. See, let's see if it is C. Cool. Uma Devi, Sreya, Srinivasan, C. Let's see if it is C. It is C. Uh, jo, uh, the, the particular per, the, the character, Adam in Adam the Bead, was a carpenter. Uh, yes. Mention the year in which political Shakespeare by Jonathan Dolimore and Alan Sinfield was published. These two people are probably the most important. Two of the most important people as far as Shakespearean studies is concerned, living people. Jonathan Dolimore came to my home city, Thiruvananthapuram, uh, five years ago, where I went and attended a lecture delivered by the person. Good lecture. So Dolimore and Alan Sinfield are two significant Shakespearean studies scholars who wrote political Shakespeare and from not wrong works such as radical tragedy. Now, you have to tell me in which year was this particular work, Political Shakespeare, which is again extremely significant as far as Shakespearean studies is concerned. When was this published? Anybody? Can you take a guess? Let's see if this is answer. It was published in 1985. So this work is again a collection of essays that examine the political and ideological dimensions of Shakespeare's play, I wish I could talk more, but I don't think time will permit. All right. Next question. This is again a match the following question from Indian literature. Uh, try to give me the answer. The Feast of Youth, Hunger, Writer's Workshop, Touch. On the other side, we have Meenakanda Swami, Pilal, Purojanla, uh, Harindrana Chadopadhyaya, and Jayanda Mahavatra. Give me the answer. I think you will take some time. So let, let me. C is the. Yeah, C is the answer. Correct. Mushtina is right. All right. Uh, Feast of Youth is associated with uh, Harindranath uh, Chattopadhyay, Hunger with Jayanta Mahabhatra, Writer's Workshop with Pilal, and Touch with Meena Kandaswami. Which among the following has written tales of grotesque and Arabic songs? Give me the answer. Which among the following has written tales of Ar grotesque and Arabic I'll ask an extra question after you give me the answer. Come on. Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is the answer. So, uh, Tale of, Tales of Grotesque and Arabic is a collection of short stories by Edgar Allan Poe. It was first published in 1840 and contains some of his most significant works like The Fall of the House of Usher, The Murders in the Raw Morgue, The Mask of the Red Death. Now, the extra question that I want to ask you is dash this. Who is associated with the theoretical or, uh, or term, term Carnivalesque? Carnivalesque and grotesque. Carnivalesque and grotesque are two concepts put forward by Dash, a Russian philosopher or Russian thinker. Give me the answer. You have five seconds. You should know this. I assume you guys are doing your masters at masters, right? So you should, yeah, Bhaktin is the answer. Mikhail Bhaktin is the answer. Uh, all right. Again, I want to spend some time to explain this, but I don't think we'll have we have only 13 questions. We have 100 questions. 
or rain. Next season, the, uh, an account of the life of Mr. Richard Savage, son of uh, the Earl Rivers, was the first major biography published by Tash. Give me the answer. Is it Pope, Addison, Johnson, or Boswell? Give me the answer. It's it Pope, Addison, Johnson, or Boswell. Let's try with Johnson. Answer is Johnson. It was written by, it, it was a first major biography published by Samuel jo Johnson. And it focuses on the life of Richard Servish, an English poet and writer. All right. 15 questions. Which of the following playwrights have collaborated in writing the satire three hours after marriage? The, like who among the following five have come together to bring out this play? Is it John Gay, Dryden, Pope, Conreef, Albert Note? Give me the answer. All right, let's try with D. Thanks. No, it's B. B is the answer. It, it is John Gay, Alexander Pope, and John Arbuthnot come together to bring out the play three hours after marriage in the year 1717. And the play mocks various aspects of the society, including structures like uh, marriage, literature, politics, with using devices like humor and wit. All right. Arrange the following in the correct chronological sequence of their publication date. Tess of the Doberville, Kim, The Old Wife's Tale, The Time Machine, Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. See, there are multiple methods for you to answer this question. You can either think about, um, I mean, you should directly know the year of publication, or you can try techniques like connecting the works with their respective authors, and then connecting their respective authors with the period of their uh, act, uh, active writing period, etc. So you can use multiple techniques, but at the end, you should come up with the answer. Let's see. I'm giving A. So I'll tell you the years of publication. Tests of the Doberville is written by Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy, and it was published in 1891. The Time Machine is written by H.G. Well, science fiction work. It was, read, it was published in 1895. Now, Kim by Rudyard Kipling. And it was published in 1901. The Old Wife's Tale uh, was published in 1908 by Arnold Bennett. And finally, a portrait of the artist as an young man written by James Joyce, published in 1916. All right. Next question, who among the following wrote Charlie Brown Day? Who, wrote, who among the following wrote about Charlie Brown Day that her mind contained nothing but hunger, rebellion, and rage? Who opined this? Who gave, who, who gave the opinion? Is it Gaskell, Arnold, Dickens, or Shelley? Come on, give me a guess. I'll, I'll give you a clue. Not Gaskell. Gaskell is eliminated. I'll give you a clue. He is associated with, I already gave the gender. He is associated with uh, culture and anarchy. B. Okay. B is the answer. So, Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold is the person who said that Charlie Brown Day work contained nothing but hunger, rebellion, and rage. A.K. Ramanujan, I discussed this question in my last class as well. A.K. Ramanujan, the famous Indian English poet, was also a dash. Photographer, translator, painter, classical singer, teacher at University of Chicago. C with B, D, B and E. Uma Devi says it's C. Which one should I hit? C or D? with B. 
he was all he was a translator he was a writer translator and a teacher at university of chicago next the debate on the condition of england question was initiated by dash the condition of england question it was initiated by thomas carlyle all right thomas carlyle was a scottish philosopher a writer and a historian who initiated this particular discussion or debate titled the condition of england question all right the next question a structure this this is probably from this is from uh, research methodology a structured interview consists of dash Uh, a series of predetermined questions a series of predetermined questions along with questions asked at the time of the interview a series of questions on the structure of the research questions asked at random uh you've given b as the answer let's see if it is b but b is not the answer it doesn't contain questions asked at the time of interview the answer is a it contains only the questions which are pre predetermined series of predetermined questions only next question which of the following works of milton seeks to adapt the fo fo form of greek tragedy greek tragedy has a particular structure milton adapts the same for another work written by the by, by him which is that particular work it try with samson's agonistes and yes it was a tragedy written by john milton who wrote the only english epic arguably which is paradise lost this john milton wrote samson's agonistes which was published in 1671 it was a tragedy now the work was not a tragedy it belonged to the literary genre of tragedy it seeks to adapt the form and style of greek tragedy drawing inspiration from the ancient greek dramatic techniques and conventions it explores the uh, life and uh, activities of the biblical figure samson 22nd question noam chomsky is known for his dash this is something you should know if you're doing your masters or if you've completed your masters at least a word give me the answer you should know this noam chomsky is so very significant lit, 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 linguist and uh, critic a is answer critic who is 99 years old and still very active in academics he has delivered few lectures online lectures for colleges across india during covid time so yes generative grammar is chomsky's contribution Chomsky also contributed uh, uh, concepts like uh, not Langdon Perrault, competence and performance, competence and performance, which has similarities with such as Langdon Perrault. All right. Then the third question: Some of the following poets adorn the Oxford Professor of Poetry chap. Professor of Poetry in Oxford is a designation, and some of the following poets adorn that. Or, or or was at that position you have to give me the names of those particular poets let's try c a c n d which is the answer james fenton shemus heeny and paul muldoon uh margaret tatwood and ann saxton sexton were not chairs of this particular position it's again a match the following we had plenty of match the following questions this time and assertion reason questions both in paper 1 and paper 2 all right on the left side we have graham green daniel defoe george orwell doris lessing english right british writers on the other side we have down and out in paris and london the grass is singing a journal of the plague years a sort of life you have to give me the answer Let's try with B. B is the answer. I'll tell. I'll give you the connection. Graham Greene wrote a sort of life. Daniel Defoe wrote a journal of the plague years. 
George Orwell wrote down and out in Paris and London and Doris Lessing wrote the grass is singing. So option B is the right answer. Now, easy guess in Donna Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto underscores the notion that for, for option A, plague is, plague is not by, plague is by Camo. Plague is by Camo. I, I read plague two, two months ago. It's a very small work, not small, no, under 200 pages. If you read plague, uh, you will notice that whatever he writes in the novel, plague, I think it was written sometime in 1960s, if I'm not wrong. If you know the particular year, just type in the chat book. If you read the work play, it is exactly the same, the same scene we saw during the COVID-19 time. Exactly the same. Quarantine, isolation, um, mask, social distancing, uh, lockdown, reopening, everything is pretty the same. So. If somebody tells you that this is this particular work by Camus about COVID, you would even believe. Plague is written by Camus. All right. Uh, one sec. 25th question. Donna Haraway's Cyborg Manifesto underscores the notion that A. The boundaries between animals, humans, and machines are breaking down. The cyborgs would establish a dictatorship of the proletariat in the near future. Humans and non-humans would wage a battle for the acquisition of cultural capital. Identity politics would be bolstered by the invention of artificial intelligence. This is an easy guess. <clears throat> you would even probably have cyborg manifesto to study in your masters. D is not the answer. A is the answer. I'll tell you why. So the main concern of the idea of cyborg is basically what is a human being? I am a human being. You are human being. But I'll give you an example used my professor, used by my professor who told me who when we had a discussion on cyborg. So he was like, you have a heart. You have a human heart. Now, something medical or a con particular condition happened to your heart and you had to replace your heart or the pump of the, your heart with a pacemaker. You keep a pacemaker in your heart. Oh, you can't see my heart. Right? You keep a pacemaker in your heart. Now, after you put a pacemaker, your heart, your body works perfectly. But let me ask you this question. Now, how much of your body is human? Because you have a machine inside your heart, right? So these are the kind of, this is very uh, ba basic level explanation, but these are the kind of questions that are posited by thinkers working in this particular area. And this led to uh, theoretical concepts like post-humanism, etc. So the boundary between animal, humans, and machines are breaking down. How much of you is an animal? How much of you is a human? How much of you is a cyborg? Now, Google and Apple, such companies are called, such, such, such tech giants are coming up with machines like uh, VR glass, uh, chips that could be implanted in your brain. I recently saw a video where a person is Googling from his brain. So, how much of you is a machine? How much of you is a human? So the answer is A. If you look at option B, the cyborg would establish a dictatorship of the proletariat in the near future. This is a statement from um, writings of Karl Marx. Dictatorship of the proletariat. That is from Karl Marx. Cultural capital is from Pierre E. Bourdieu, arguably. Yes. Next question. Thomas Love Peacock authored the essay Dash. Give me the answer. Revolt of Tartars. An essay on the principles of human action. Four ages of poetry, seven lamps of architecture. This is the answer. We have A and C, but I would go with C. C is the answer. This particular work presents Peacock's view on the evolution of poetry and argues for the superiority of ancient Greek poetry compared to the more recent works. All right. Okay. 27 question. Which two of the following dramatists 
have won the Sultan Padamsi Award. When I take classes on Indian uh, literary in Indian literature, I tell who won what award, and uh, that in that kind of information might come handy to answer these questions. A, okay. Hemant, uh, Doctor Hemant, give A as answer, but I'm afraid it's 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 B. Let's see if it's B. B is answer. Yes, uh, B and D, which is Guru Charan Dasan, Siras Mystery won Sultan Padamsi Award, given for dr drama contributions in drama. Twenty uh, eighth question. Statement question. See, these types of questions are frequently asked for at the exam these days. So, careful. Statement one. Wordsworth's intimations of immortality from recollections of early childhood was published in 1807. Statement two. In intimations of immortality from recollections of early childhood, Wordsworth sums up his philosophy of childhood. Now, you have four options. One and two are false. One and two are true. One is true, but two is false. One is false, but two is true. Can you give me the answer? Let's go with B. B is the answer. Both these statements are true. Now, what is the correct sequence of the following text written by text authored by? Raymond Williams, The Long Revolution, Culture and Society, Marxism and Literature, Writing in Society, The Politics of Modernism. Give me the answer. Raymond Williams is a famous cultural theorist. Post-1950 cultural and literary critic and theorist, cultural theorist. Uh, new Left, belonged to the school of New Left, was a Marxian thinker, etc. What is the answer? 29th question, what is the answer? Answer is B. B A C D E. I'll give you the order. It goes like this. Uh, A is not the answer, Mosina. It's it's B. Uh, the order goes like this. Uh, first is culture and society. One sec. Yeah, first is culture and society. Next is uh, the long revolution. Then comes Marx and literature. And then writings in society, and then the politics of modernism so when you next time when you study uh, works by a particular writer try to arrange them try to study them in the chronological order itself at least try to remember the first and last work but remembering all the works and at least the significant works is very important so next time you study uh, take care to study it in the chronological order all right 30th question who among the following are known as Cambridge critics. Who among the following are known as the Cambridge critics? Arthur Coach, F. R. Lewis, George Sainsbury, I. A. Richards, and William Empson. William Empson. You give C as the answer. Let's try with C. But C is not the answer. D is the correct answer. Uh, and the members were F. R. Lewis, I. A. Richards, and William Empson. If you take a look at close look at these three writers, all of them belong to the school of new criticism. Cambridge critics refers to a group of literary critics associated with the University of Cambridge, who were influential in the 20th century. And the answer is F. R. Lewis, I. A. Richards, and William Emson. It takes us to the 31st question. From which novel of Charles Dickens are the following lines extracted? Uh, I took her in, read along with me, okay, I took her in, I took her hand in mine, and I went out of the ruined place, and as the morning mist had risen long ago, when I first left the forge, so the evening mist were rising now, and in all the broad expanse of tranquil light they showed to me, I saw no shadow of another parting from her. This is taken from Dash. Is it? A, Musina came up with A. Let's see if it's A. A is the right answer. This particular line, the, 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 the portion is taken from Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. 
uh, it, the particular work explores the themes related to ambition, social class, uh, love and personal growth. Um, Charles Dickens is a extremely, I can't stress how important he is as far as NET exam is concerned because every time you get one question or the other from Charles Dickens, even if you spend a good amount of time dealing with Charles Dickens, uh, it will be it won't be a loss or it, it will be extremely beneficial. So take care of Charles Dickens. Next, who among the following is an Australian Aboriginal writer? Give me the answer. Mosin answered A. Is it for this question or the was it for the previous question? Anyway, it's not the answer. It's Kate Walker. So Kate Walker, this is not her original Aboriginal name. Uh, but she was an Australian Aboriginal poet, activist, and an artist. She was a prominent figure in Australian indigenous rights movement and used her poetry to advocate social justice and raise awareness about the experiences and struggles of the Aboriginal Australians. If you uh, study Australia or Australian literature or Australian history carefully, you would uh, know that Australia has a history of Aboriginal oppression by the colonizers. The Aboriginal people of Australia were massacred, were sidelined, were removed from the mainland and pushed to uh, margins, ostracized uh, in the most brutal way possible. So if you take a look at Australia, it has this kind of history as well. All right. 33rd question. Thomas Hobbes' philosophical drag Leviathan was published in Dash. You have to give me the year of publication. A. All of you are answering A continuously. I have a friend who once told me, you have 100 questions. If you hit A for all the 100 questions, would you stand a chance of getting 25 percentage marks? I don't know how far that is logical, but I find that illogical. I hope you understood the joke. All right. You've given D as answer. Let's see. So D is not the answer. It's C. Leviathan was published in 1651. Uh, it is one of Hope's most significant. So if you study Hope's, you would definitely come across Leviathan. So take care of the year of publication as well. Uh, all right. 34th question, who, who among the following wrote the play? Angels in America. Angels in America. Let's go with D, okay. Tony Kushner is the answer. Uh, he wrote Angels in America and the uh, it was first performed in 1991 and it gained widespread acclaim for its exploration of the AIDS crisis, AIDS, HIV AIDS crisis, and its impact on the American society in 1980s. So Tony Kushner, Angels in America, it dealt with themes related to HIV AIDS uh, crisis or situation, and it dealt with scenarios and it dealt with society, and the American society of 1980s. All right. The author of The Golden Bow, a text that influenced T.S. Eliot's poetry and criticism substantially is Dash. You should know this. This is extremely significant work. J.G. Fraser is the answer. J.G. Fraser is the uh, right answer. So J.G. Fraser wrote The Golden Bow, which was first published in 1890. It is an important work in the field of anthropology or uh, uh, religious studies or mythology studies, etc. It explores myths, rituals, and religious practices across different cultures around the world. And this influenced T.S. Eliot, especially in the work in the poem Dash. Give me the answer. Which is a poem probably most influenced by J.G. Fraser's The Golden Bow? Which poem written by T.S. Eliot was most influenced by this particular work? Give me the answer. 
if you can quickly remember one poem written by T.S. Eliot, which is that something that you should know. There is no excuse about it. Give me the answer. Absolutely no excuse about it. Wasteland. The wasteland. The wasteland was uh, extensively or uh, it was heavily influenced by J.G. Fraser's The Golden Bird. Many myths uh, used by Eliot in The Wasteland is from The Golden Bow. Next question. Which of the following methods is used to study the diversity of human cultures in their particular cultural setting? Research. Again, this is a question from research methodology. Which of the following methods is used to study the diversity of human cultures in, the, in their particular setting? Is it visual method of study? Is it archival method of study? Is it discourse analysis or is it ethnography? If you can see, even if you do not know the answer, try to think about these particular words in your mind and then give me the answer. Visual method of study is when you uh, study something that is visual. For example, let's say a painting or something. Okay, this is a vague explanation, but this will do at the moment, do for the time being. Visual method is something you visualize when you study something from a visual or something. Let's say a painting. Archival method of study is when you go to archives, library archives, newspaper archives, and dig up the archive and then use that particular method to make a study. Discourse analysis is most often it's 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 uh, an armchair research work where you try to extract or when you try to pull a thread of discourse from a particular text. Not necessarily a literary written text, but any text. Now comes ethnography. What is ethnographic study? Ethnographic study is when you uh, immerse yourself among the people to whom this cultural setting belong to. Right? If you do an extensive ethnographic study, it can give you an idea of that particular place. So isn't D which is ethnography is the answer. D is the answer. Even if you do not do not know the uh, answer directly, you can think these think in these lines and come up with an answer. All right. Thirty seven question. Which of the following plays have been written by Edward Albee? The Zoo Story, The Price, The Delicate Balance, Fences, Operation Sidewinder. Give me the answer. Thirty seven question. Come on, give me the answer. Sapthan, Shumusina, Dishani, Consider, Dr. Heyman. Somebody come up with an answer. C. Okay, let's try C. C is the right answer. Uh, zoo story and delicate balance. Both these plays are written by Edward Albee. Which of the following plays were written by Ben Johnson? Flowers of Latin speaking, The Devil is an Ass, Sappho and Fo, The Women in the Moon, The Staple of News. Which of the following are written by Ben Johnson? Can you come up with an answer? Let's try C. Yes, The Devil is an Ass. It's a comedy play written by Ben Johnson and it was first performed in 1660. Next, The Staple of News is again a satirical play by Johnson and which was first performed in 1628. These two are the plays by Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson also wrote plays like Wolfhorn and Fox, uh, etc. Now, again, we have an assertion recent question. Given below are two statements. One is an assertion and the other is labeled as a reason. Now, assertion. We have the assertion statement is A. Scholars working in the field of cultural studies maintain that culture in cultural studies is neither aesthetic nor humanist in emphasis, but political. Reason. The implication of the above is that the object of study in cultural studies is high art and the study of the exalted literary canon. Options are A and R are correct, but R is not the correct explanation of A. A and R are correct, 
First is R is the correct explanation way. Second is R is not the correct explanation way, but A and R are correct. See, A is correct, but R is not correct. And D, A is not correct, R is correct. Give me the answer. Give me the answer. See, if you've spent at least one class discussing cultural studies, it would be easy to at least take a guess. Come on, take a guess. See, read the statements. R says that culture in culture studies is neither aesthetic nor humanist in emphasis, but political. This is the central argument of cultural studies. This is the most fundamental, basic, central, significant argument of cultural studies. No doubt about that. Next, R. It implies that the culture in cultural studies is high art or the objective study of cultural studies is high art and the study of the exalted literary canon. This statement is completely opposite to the previous statement, right? It is <coughs> not the study of high art. It is probably the study of all kinds of art. And it, it kind, of, kind of eliminates the distinction between high art and low art. Cultural studies argues that there is no high art, there is no low art. Art is political and it is political in nature fundamentally. So, R, C is the answer. A is correct. R is not correct. Next question. B. Which B? The previous question. No, C is the answer. A is correct. R is not correct. It is not just about high art. It is about the vanishing differences between high art and low art. All right. Next question. Question number 40. Arrange the correct chronological sequence of the publication of the following text. Essay of Dramatic Poesy, A Room of One's Own, Culture and Anarchy, The Lives of the Poets, preface to Lyrical Ballads. See, it is easy to answer if you can think about the writers of these particular works. All right. Can you, can you give me the answer? Just, just, it might take some time, but think. Let's try with A. A is a correct answer, meaning the first is essay of dramatic poesy. It is written by John Dryden and it was published in 1668. John Dryden. All right, 1668 is uh, sometime post Jacobin era, uh, mid 17th century. John Dryden comes to that era. So if you know essays of dramatic poesy is written by John Dryden, you can at least Plays the era. Now, the life of the poet comes next. It is a collection of biographical works written by Samuel Johnson. And it was published in 1779. Uh, like it, it came in multiple volumes, first in 1779 and then in 1781. Next is Preface to Lyrical Ballads, the famous work written by William Wordsworth, Romantic Era. It was published in um, 1800, multiple, multiple revisions and editions, but 1800. Now, next comes Culture and Anarchy, Victorian era, because it is written by Matthew Arnold and it was written in 1869. And finally comes A Room of One's Own, written by Virginia Woolf in 1928, 20th century. So if you can at least uh, place these works or, or connect these works with their respective writers, and then try to place these particular writers in their respective era. It is simple to answer this question. Who among the following are called the Edwardian novelist? Who among the following are the Edwardian novelists? Give me the answer. What is Edwardian era? It refers to a group of writers who were active during the Edwardian era, which is which spans from 1901 to 1910 in England. So the writers associated with this particular era are uh, Arnold Bennett, H.G. Wells, and E.M. Forster. All right. Okay. Next, which of which among the following is true about corpus linguistics? A. It is a collection of naturally occurring spoken and written texts. B. It has ensured the supremacy of speech over writing. C. It is about the teaching of linguistics at the school level. D. It is a methodology that involves computer-based empirical analysis of language use. 
E. It is a branch of linguistics that is purely based on Chomsky and linguistics. This is a tough question. I I agree. Let's see if it is C. This is a tough question in the sense you need to have a specific knowledge about what a corpus linguistics or you should have a good grasp over linguistics. I mean, basic simple definition, but answer is C anyway. Answer is C. C is most seen as right. Good. C is the answer. It is question number 42. Option A and option D are correct. Option A is correct because corpus linguistics relies on the collection of naturally occurring texts both spoken and written to analyze and analyze and understand language. Now, option D is correct because corpus linguistics involves the use of computer-based tools and methods of empirical analysis of language use. All right. 43. What does Pierre Bourdieu imply by the term habitus in his sociological studies? Before we uh, try to solve the answer, I'll tell you what habitus is. So, in, in, the hab, in the concept of habitus, what Bodhi is trying to argue is that the character, let, let, let's take uh, me as an example. I am the example here. So my character, my behavior, everything is shaped by my environment. The place I am at, the place I am living, the kind of people that I'm meeting, the, the kind of exposure that I am I'm getting, my school, my, my college, my social setting. Um, everything all these things contribute to what my behavior is me the person is built is built by my habitus now you give me the answer option a the culture of increasing consumerization of post capitalist societies b the phenomenon of masses succumbing to material fetishism of different types a person's posture speech and the mental habit of perception classification appreciation feeling and action Habit, personal habits that do not embed the society profoundly. Now give me the answer. Now, now give me the answer. From my explanation, what I've explained to you, think and give me the answer. Dishani came up with a C and wait. And C is a right answer. Good. All right. It takes us to question number 44. Again, it's an assertion reason type question. Given below are two statements. One is labeled as an assertion, other is labeled as reason. So A, the experience of homosexuality in a homophobic culture is not the same for whites and blacks. Reason, sexuality and sexual identity is expressed differently by blacks and whites. Give me the answer. 10 seconds, give me the answer. Think, think quick. Dishani Musina, who else? Anshu. Give me the answer. Take a guess. Krish guessed B, but B is not the answer. It's A. See, experience of homosexuality in a homophobic culture. You know what homophobic, right? It is when you, when the society tries to, or it's a tendency to ostracize homosexual people. The experience of homosexuality in a homophobic culture is not same for whites and blacks because your race, your skin color, your race, your ethnicity defines your privilege. The kind of treatment that you get according to your ethnicity is unfortunately different because society as a whole is assumed to be uh, racist in this case. Reason. Sexuality and sexual identity is experienced differently by white and black. black. That's exactly what I explained now. So, A and R are correct and R is the correct explanation of A. I think it makes sense now. 45th question is a correct question. This is easy. Give me the answer. Give me the answer. Let's try with 2, B. Which is the answer? I'll give you the answer. Uh, response to Stephen Grosen is written by Philip Sidney. This is a classic match the following question. Philip Sidney wrote in response to Stephen Grosen. Now, 
the individual talent is associated with TSL, tradition and individual talent, very famous, TS Eliot. Catharsis, catharsis is a Greek dramatic concept and the only Greek dramatic or Greek writer, not dramatic, Greek writer in the list is Aristotle. What is catharsis? Is the turn, the twist in the, or the change in character and behavior of a person after witnessing a tragedy or after witnessing the fate of the tragic hero which occurred due to tragic flow, which is catharsis, which is associated with Aristotle. Sweetness and light is associated with Matthew Arnold. Purification, exactly, purification. In catharsis, the character or the, the viewer, not the character, the, the person who is watching the play undergoes a kind of purification. Because imagine I am the character, I, mean, I am the viewer and I watch the play and I am like, what if I do exactly the same thing that the tragic hero does? I will also suffer the same fate. So I don't do this. I am a good person. I am not a bad person. I am not going to do this. That is catharsis. 46 question. Uh, which of the following fictional works from the works form a trilogy by Mulkiraj Anand? Village Private Life of an Indian Prince, uh, Across the Black Waters, a Sword and the Sicker the roads which among the three which, which among the five follows a trilogy trilogy is a collection of three works anybody the answer is b because this particular trilogy by mulkra Anand includes village across the black water and the sword and the sickle some of the following are significant texts of Victorian criticism. Identify them. Not that easy, but still you can write the answer. 47 question. The options are studies in the history of the Renaissance, from rituals to romance, Hamlet and his problems, the function of criticism in the present time, modern painters, which among the following are significant texts of Victorian criticism. Anybody? Anybody? Let's try with option B. Option B is the correct answer. The significant works are one, studies in the history of Renaissance. It was written by Walter Pater and it was published in 1873. It is a key text in aesthetic criticism and explores the relationship between art and life. Second work is The Function of Criticism in the Present Time. It's a work written by Matthew Arnold. Now, the last work in the list is Modern Painters. It's written by John Ruskin. Like it exposes the uh, aesthetic of art and architecture and has an in, like significant impact on Victorian criticism. So these three works, Studies in the History of Renaissance, The Function of Criticism in the Present Time, and Modern Painters, these are the significant works of Text of Victorian criticism. 48. Arrange the following playwrights chronologically in accordance with the year of their birth. All of these writers are from India. Asif Karimbu, Guru Jarandas, Nesim Esikil, Give Patel, and Siras Mystery. You have to arrange them in chronological order in accordance with the year of their birth, birth date. So you should ideally know their birth date. Anybody? Anybody, this demands a, either you should be able to place them in their respective, not era, but decade of their, no, even that is difficult. You should know the exact date of birth or at least the decade of birth to place them. Again, little difficult. Can you, can you take a guess? Anybody? Let's go with C. First is Nessim Esikil, who was born in 1924. Nessim Esikil wrote poems like The Honor Price, The Night of the Scorpion, etc. Next comes Asif Karimboy, the Indian dramatist, who was born in 1928. Next is Gif Patel, Indian poet, who was born in 1940. Next is Guru Charan Das, 1943. And last is Siras Mystery, who was born in 1954. All right. 49 question. Name the book in which Peter Brook makes a study of the 
late 1940s theater in which work did peter brook make a study of the late 1940 theater anybody take a guess if you do not take a guess i am going to assume that you all slept the net exam do not have negative marks no negative marks so this ideal and advised and almost compulsory that you should attend all the questions because you have nothing to lose no negative marks. fortunately till now no negative marks so you can do a free hit if you do not know the answer but this is a tip try to eliminate first if you can obviously eliminate one or two options that leaves us with only only leaves us with 50 percentage of the options so your probability increases so try to eliminate first if even that is not possible try to take a free hit c and d i'll go with a then the empty space is the answer uh in this particular work peter brook discusses various aspects of theater in, including his study of the late 1940s theater uh, it explores theater forms and approaches to acting and uh, the transformative power that the theater has all right fifth year because we are half way there the character who discusses the relative merit of french drama and english drama in the work the essay of dramatic pose is dash neander lesidus crites and eugenius so the essay of dramatic pose is a work written by dash give me that answer first who wrote essay of dramatic pose okay you've given b as a correct answer yes okay fine but who dryden dryden wrote in the work they say essay of dramatic poetry and this answer this question the answer is b lesidius so uh, lesidius is a character who discusses the relative merits of french and english drama in the work essay of dramatic poetry all right Francis Bacon's the advancement of learning was dedicated to dash see um, how would you make a guess tell me how would you make a guess anybody why do writers make dedications these days writers make dedications to their loved ones or people who have helped them in their career but back then during that era the main source of income money for the writers is the pay patronage system you have patrons patrons are those people who will sponsor you to write so you have to please them to please these people these writers dedicate their works to their patrons makes sense right so who would be the patron of francis bacon patron has to be alive patron has to be from that era right so it is Okay, Mosina guessed. It's not a guess. Actually, good answer. Good, good. Okay, answer is King. Wait, A is the correct answer. It is dedicated to James One. You have to connect all of these term, all of these works and writers are from portion New Criticism, Practical Criticism, New Criticism, the Well Wrote One on the Great Tradition. John Crow Ransom, F. R. Lewis, I. E. Richardson, K. N. Brooks, connect. Okay, the answer is B. Okay, good, good, Musina, good. Practical criticism, I. E. Richards. See, uh, one sec. Practical criticism, I. E. Rich. One sec, one sec, one sec. A three. Okay, practical criticism. I hear Richards. New criticism. J. C. Ransom. The well wrote on Clint Brooks and finally the great tradition. F. R. Lewis. Okay. Which of the following concepts are associated with the writings of Jean Baudrillard? Hyperreality, brick collage, rhizome, simulacra, disposed. If I'm not sure the pronunciation is right, 
disposed okay all right give me the answer 53rd question give me the answer d okay a and d hyperreality and simulacra brick collage is associated with post structuralism hyperreality and simulacra are two concepts put forward by gene bonds and what are the hyperreality is when the concept of hyperreality refers to the uh, condition where boundaries between reality and simulations are blurred uh, it, 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 it's it's a post modern concept in bodelard's concept of simulacra it refers to the idea that in post modern society signs and symbols are no longer it doesn't represent underlying reality but instead creates its own reality or simulation gulf war did not take place all right Both, uh, so this is one classic case in every time in net exam you have question from uh, education commissions english education commission so kothari commission is off repeated topic kothari commission suggested a that english must be a link language to translate one indian language text to another that english be studied as a library language with aim of getting knowledge of science and technology commerce and trade by reading standard books in english c that research in india should be done only in english and d that a teacher at university must know how to speak and write in english question number 54 give me the answer take a guess so this kothari commission was officially known as education commission and it was established in 1964 to examine and make recommendations for development of education in the country give me the answer take a guess 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 easy guess or take a free hit if you can guess anybody dishani mosina doctor anybody let's go with b then so this kothari commission suggested that english be study should be studied as a library language with the aim of getting knowledge of science and technology commerce and trade by reading standard english books ted hughes book woodrow is dash volume named from the wild men of woods of sir gavin and the, the green knight this comes from the arthurian legends arthurian legends that revolved around king arthur and uh, its knight his team of knights b a volume named after the elves of the mask of the tempest c a volume named after the central character of pearl d a volume named after the name of the monster of beowulf the monster of beowulf is grendel if i am not wrong what is the answer question number 55 what is the answer guess this is this is something you should guess take a guess good a is the answer so uh ted hughes work wood is a poetry collection which is, I mean, the, the collection was written in 1967 the title of the volume is derived from the term wood to or wood bulls which refers to wild men or wood dwelling creatures found in the medieval folklore especially in the poem sir gavin and the gavin and the green knight and this work as i told you earlier this comes under the category of arthurian legends sir uh, gavin and the green knight was made to a movie last year in which the title character is played by uh, dev patel a slum dog millionaire same dev patel all right who proposed the idea that the mind at the time of birth is like a blank slate or tabula rasa who proposed this particular idea a john locke is the answer john locke belonged to the 17th century and he was a significant philosopher as far as the history of western philosophy is concerned and he proposed the idea that at the time of birth mind is at the state of blank slate or or at the time that the mind at the time of birth is like a blank slate or tabula 
57 question who among the following is an early tudor poet tudor tudor period simple you have to connect the writer with the era chaucer langlen gower all of them belong to the almost same era right so that leaves us with john skelton who belong to the tudor period and john skelton was born in 1463 all right and he lived during the tudor period he is known for his satirical and allegorical poetry all right the name of the father is a term made famous by dash the name of the father psychoanalysis name of the father father figure name of the father guess this you should guess father figure not freud so who comes after freud not carl jung jack lacan when you have an obvious answer as jack lacan why would you have to go with yeah lacan is answer jung is more of collective psychology if i'm not wrong lacan is associated with the name of father it's a crucial element in psychoanalytical theory so according to lacan the name of the father represents the symbolic order the law and the function of authority within the psychoanalytical framework you have a father figure all right so this word is associated with jack lacan uh which of the following are written by william faulkner william faulkner the right american writer the american from the deep south of america who is also famous for creating the fictional geography yokma potoba pardon if my pronunciation is wrong i always repeat this word in my classes yokma potoba is a fictional place by created by william faulkner now which of the following works in the list are written by william faulkner give me the answer sanctuary kalastra jesus the son of man light in august absalom absalom give me the answer 59th question somebody answered uh, wait d let's see if it is d no fred d is not answered it's c c uh, sanctuary light in august absalom absalom are written by william faulkner american writer writer from the deep south of america also created the fictional place yogma potoba all right next question 60th question seven types of ambiguity was published in the year dash before they tell me who was which writer is associated with seven types of ambiguity it is william epson william epson is associated with epson is correct seven types of ambiguity and this was published in the year dash anybody musina sin okay 1930 good 1930 is and so where he discusses about the say seven types of literary ambiguities all right arrange the correct chrono arrange the correct chronological sequence of events that affected literary criticism and theory see this is a very easy question if you have an idea about these particular event you can place them in chronological order man's first flight to moon okay technology end of the world war definitely before indian independence martin luther king's speech i have a dream after indian independence russian revolution early 20th century indian independence 1947 so it's very easy to uh, arrange them in chronological order let's see okay dishani give d as answer and d is a correct answer the order goes like this russian revolution all right end of world war 2 indian independence then comes martin luther king speech and then finally amir man's first flight to moon next question which of the following works have been authored by thomas carlyle chartism past and present the french revolution uh suspiria de profundis pardon my french the english mail coach so which among the following works are written by thomas carlyle 
give me the answer. Sixty second question. We are sixty two percent is done. Let's go with A, B, and C. Let's see. It is the correct answer. Chartism, ah, uh, past and present, the French Revolution. You should at least know Chartism is associated with Thomas Carlyle. All right, Chartism. Was a political and the work was a political and social commentary on the Chartist movement of the 19th century Britain. Uh, now, past and present exam is the social and economical condition of the Victorian England, and finally, the French Revolution is Carlyle's historical account of the French Revolution, highlighting its impact on the society and politics. All right. So, all right. Uh, which Three of the following plays were written by the Sanskrit dramatist, classical Sanskrit dramatist, Bhasa, Charudatta, Ethnavali, Purubanga, Malavika Agni Mitram, and Karnabaram. Eliminate Malavika Agni Mitram now and then. Right away, eliminate Malavika Agni Mitram because it is written by Kalidasa. All of you know, but which, so if you find a D in the uh, option, you can eliminate it right now. And now, now give me the answer. Sixty-third question. Give me the answer. Let's go with B. Charudatta, Urubanga, and Karnabharam are written by Basa. All right. Basa is a classical Sanskrit dramatist. Next, which of the following is not written by Margaret Atwood? Tell me. Uh, The nationality of Margaret Atwood. Type in the chat box. Tell me the nationality of Margaret Atwood. Come on. To which nation? Uh, Canadian. Canadian. Uh, Margaret Atwood is a Canadian writer or Canadian English writer. So, uh, which among the following is not a work written by Margaret Atwood? See. Uh, the handmaid's tale is probably her most significant probably the widely read most read work by margaret atwood the edible women is also famous and that leaves us with the stone angel and surfacing the i will eliminate surfacing because i have read surfacing so it's easy for me to eliminate surfacing but at least if you can eliminate the handmaid's tale and the edible women will come up come you will be left with two options surfacing is a work written by margaret atwood i don't think it is that famous but it explores themes such as uh, such as nature nature consciousness ecological consciousness etc stone angel is the answer it is not written by margaret atwood but who wrote stone angel that is a question who wrote stone angel any guess it's written by margaret lawrence uh, another canadian writer not good margaret lawrence not margaret atwood edible women surfacing the handmaid's tale testaments these are the etc these are the power poems these are the works written by the canadian writer margaret atwood extremely significant writer The concept of the public sphere plays a particularly important role in the work of Dash. Is it jar? It's Jargon. I think it's pronounced Jargon, not Jargon. Jargon Habermas, Jonathan Dolimor, Jean Bordilla, Raymond Williams. Public sphere. Public sphere is a very famous concept introduced by this person. Who is that? Tell you what a public sphere is. Any guess? It's Jurgen Habermas. Habermas is associated with a uh, public sphere. See, um, public sphere is a concept developed by Jurgen Habermas. I'll tell you what it is. It, it explores the idea of a public sphere. You go by the literal definition of a public sphere. It's a sphere or it's a space where people come together to have discussion. rational debates uh, and it's a mode of democratic participation in the society so according to habermas this public sphere is essential for the functioning of a healthy democracy 
providing a platform for the exchange of ideas and opinions among the citizens now he also introduced a concept called refeudalization here listen carefully if you are interested it's little complicated it, 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 he introduces a concept of refeudalization what is refeudalization it is when particular agents within the public sphere i told you already that public sphere is a platform where people come together to have discussion all right certain particular participants will try to uh, introduce their own political ideas thereby or their own social whatever ideas thereby altering the character of this public sphere this this is very basic this is refeudalization so public sphere come back to public sphere public sphere is a concept introduced by jurgen habermas habermas is also alive i think he is somewhere in his late 90s if i am not 99 or something all right okay which three of the following plays have been written by nisti mystical savaska marish pom nalini mr bairam sleep walkers i taught this in my previous class if you have attended in previous class easy guess no guess easy easy answer 66 question give me the answer which among the following are written by nisim asikil anybody musina dishani anybody okay let's see go with d d is the correct answer uh play is written by nisim asikil or marish pom uh nalini and sleep walkers arrange the correct chronological sequence in which the following texts are published two versions the painter of signs shadow from ladakh a bend in the ganges to whom she will 67th question and you have to arrange this in the chronological order uh not that easy to arrange this but any anybody any guess any any guess 67 question the answer is let's go with c c is the right answer the the order is to whom she will comes first it is written by ruth pravar jabwala in 1953 next is a bend in the ganges 1964 by manohar malgonkar who wrote a bend in the river that is a different case who wrote bend in the river type in the chat box next comes c shadow from ladakh 1967 by bhavani bhattacharya two versions comes next written in 1976 by kamala markandeya good musina rai naipol is answer i'll come to that the painter of signs finally the painter of signs in 1977 by r k narayan i asked a question who wrote bend in the ganges it is written by v s nai pool people often confuse between you know, bend in the ganges and bend in the river okay who among the following built the red lion in stephanie in 1567 okay but before that what is this red lion anybody 68 question what is red lion anybody it's a theater theater in england like the globe red lion is the name of a theater and the answer is 3 john brain this john brain was a 16th century english uh, theater uh, theatrical im, uh, impresario and english entrepreneur he is best known for his involvement with the construction of the red lion theater one of the first purpose built public theaters in london so along with james burbage another important theater figure B- uh, brain secured a lease for a plot of land in stepney the name of the place in 1567 and together they built the red theater but the main person involved in this is john brain next question connect egotistical sublime willing suspension of disbelief touchstone pleasures of imagination you should at least be familiar with uh, who is associated with egotistical sublime william suspension of billing suspension of disbelief and 
let's stone at least these three it's okay if you do not know not okay but it's for now it's fine if you don't know pleasures of imagination but a let's see if a is answer a is the correct answer uh, egotistical sublime is associated with jaunty willing suspension of disbelief is associated with coleridge that's stone by uh, matthew arnold and pleasures of the imagination by joseph addison 70th question the goddess the name of goddess in kantapura is dash i taught kantapura two classes ago the name of the name of the goddess in kantapura is kenjamma let's see face answer kenjamma which kenjamma is the right answer see i you might remember me telling you that kantapura the characters have uh, nice names waterfall vengamma kenjamma rakkamma etc okay arrange the fall arrange the correct chronological sequence of the publication of the following text september 1 1939 the caller depo paradise lost seeing things anybody so this also you can use the same technique first try to connect these works with their authors and then place the authors in their respective era anybody okay musina guest a but is it for this question no a is answer it goes like this the caller first it was written by george herbert then comes paradise lost by john milton obviously then comes bepo by uh, byron and then september 1 1939 by uh, w jordan and finally seeing things by shima sini if you can connect these works with their writers things get easy next who among the following argued that children learn language based on behaviorist reinforcement principles by associating words with meaning who among the following argued that children learn language based on behaviorist reinforcement principles by associating words with meaning behaviorism this topic is usually discussed in english language teaching topic elt behaviorism who is associated with behaviorism reinforcement etc b of skinner is an easy guess here actually who is peter singer by the way peter singer wrote a book titled animal liberation i once took a class on animal studies and uh, remember discussing peter singer peter singer is associated with animal studies animal liberation is a work written by peter singer here the answer is b f skinner the aesthetics of thomas aquinas is written by dash james joyce humberto eco walter pater matthew arnold give me the answer Mosina answered B. I assume this that was for this question. B is answer. Yumberto Eco. Yumber. Who was Yumberto Eco? I remember discussing Yumberto Eco also in the class. Yumberto Eco uh, was is an Italian philosopher, uh, writer and semiotician. All right. Eco uh, wrote works like Name of the Rose. Uh, signs of fascism I'm not sure if it was 13 signs of fascism but i remember signs of fascism name of the rose is an important work by uh yumberto eco i remember asking this question in class uh what is the connection between yumberto eco and puco puco michel puco how would you connect michel foucault and humberto eco anybody humberto eco has written a work titled foucault's pendulum okay foucault's pendulum but i am not sure if it is the same foucault but the words the names connect humberto eco has written works like foucault's pendulum name of the rose etc 74th question uh the cultural theorist stuart hall has written the following 
which among the following uh, encoding decoding the rediscovery of ideology return of the repressed in media culture and communication studies the raw and the cooked what is digital humanities culture industry give me the answer give me the and 74th question eliminate culture industry right now because culture industry is associated with adorno and hokeimer that is easy eliminated give me the answer musin and dishani make a guess take a guess 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 ashok dishani dr hemant harita musina come up with a guess the encoding decoding is probably the most important not sure if it is the most important but very important work of stuart hall a is the answer encoding decoding and the rediscovery of ideology stuart hall is again a, a cultural literary critic uh, who who wrote critical works on uh, media television etc 75th question it's it's a connect question connect the works with the era of year of publication 75th question uh see before that tell me what is common between these works can you guess a what is common with these works what is the common element in these works these works are written by roland bark okay d is the answer i'll tell you the years publication writing degree zero was published in 1954 mythology is in 57 the empire of science in 70 and finally the pleasure of the text in 73 roland bark 76 the movement poets included dash donald davy hilda dolittle michael longley philip larkin and derek walcott try to make a few eliminations and then come up with an answer 76 question so the poets associated with this movement poetry they aim to uh, create a more traditional and accessible form of poetry rejecting the experimental and subjective approaches of their contemporaries uh, they emphasize the importance of clarity craftsmanship and use of traditional poetic forms their works focused on themes of everyday life personal experiences and challenges of living in a rapidly changing world this is what moment poetry is but the question is who are the i mean who among the following are part of this particular movement b you guess b let's see if it is b b is the answer a and d donald davy and philip larkin philip larkin is probably the most representative poet of movement poetry who wrote works like i discussed this in the last class i think mosin and dishani were there which were the works i mentioned in the last class is mosin was there if i am right which were the works i discussed in the last class written by philip larkin church going water i like these two works because they connected in one way or the other by reading facts about the frankfurt school included the following which among them the mark correct it was founded in frankfurt germany in 1924 5 adorno and hokeimer were its two members the school establishes the term critical theory it had strong ties with thinkers of moscow linguistic circle it was forced into exile and the uh, ascendancy with the ascendancy of nazism in germany which among the following are correct b c d a b c a c e n b c e give me the answer frankfurt school is extremely significant as far as cultural studies or even literary and uh, cultural literary and cultural theory is concerned frankfurt school is a uh, 
point from which one of the points from from which cultural studies took a growth i don't know in how came or uh, are its key members who came up with the idea of culture industry where they propose the idea that culture is a commodity or uh, culture is an industry or culture is produced as a part of the industry where products are mass produced and fed to people and people the buyers or the consumers are indoctrinated with the idea to buy certain products they have no choice they only have a sense of consciousness they think the customers think that they are in control but they are in absolute no control this is what the cultural studies of the adorno and horkheimer were trying to argue in their essay on cult on culture industry now give me the answer anybody let us go with d see if d is the correct answer b c and d adorno and horkheimer were its two members obviously c the school establishes the establish the term uh, critical theory so uh, the frankfurt school is widely considered or widely uh, given the uh, the 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 parentship of the idea critical theory all right so it it seeks to critique and challenge the social cultural and political structures existing critical theory examines the power relations or the the ideologies and social norms to uncover and challenge forms of domination and oppression in society and culture all right so critical theory is associated with frankfurt school now e it was forced into exile during the growth of nazism in germany the members were forced to exile and they moved to various countries including united states where they continued to work and influence the academia all right so d is the correct answer 78 question who among the following was not a member of the beat generation who among the following were not a part of beat generation beat generation was a literary and cultural movement during the 1950s primarily in us uh, and who are its key members or or who among the following are were part of the beat generation or were not a part of beat generation the question is were not a part of beat generation the answer is rita dof alan ginsberg uh, gregory corso and jack i am still not sure how to pronounce this but irok is what i pronounce but correct me if i am wrong they were the part of beat generation name the play during the performance of which the globe theater was burned down globe theater renowned or most famous for William for staging Shakespeare, hosting Shakespeare, Shakespearean plays. But uh, which of these plays was played during the performance of which the Globe Theatre was burned down? Anybody? Is it Henry the Sixth, Henry the Eighth, Richard the Second, Richard the Third? Anybody? Should I call out the names? Ashok, Dishani, Harida, Musina. Anybody? Anybody? Let's go with uh, okay. Deshani said C, but C is not the answer. It is B. Henry VIII. It was during the performance of Henry VIII that the Globe Theatre was burned down. The fire. Listen to this carefully. The fire was the fire was caused uh, by a cannon shot. Cannon shot, which was used as a special effect during the performance of the play. so the play itself caused the fire eventually burning the globe theater down the full format of mlat is dash is it modern language alertness test modern language affective test modern language aptitude test modern language asset test see this is the easiest guess you can you can take a very easy guess you which one will you eliminate first asset test what is asset test no idea no clue so you eliminate asset now itself do no as asset is nowhere possible eliminate asset affective test alertness test 
aptitude test the alertness and effective doesn't make much sense what do you alert in a test like what alertness being tested in a test so it doesn't make sense effective is something uh, that should affect or has an emotional side to it we eliminate that or aptitude is the best shot here even if you come un not prepared and prepared for this question you can take a guess c is the answer modern language there is a typo in the options but ignore that modern language aptitude test 81st question identify the works written by richard bensley rb richard sheridan which of the following works are written by sheridan give me the answer give me the answer can we go with option c okay musina said c c is the answer b and c saint patrick's day and the tuna saint patrick's day is a comedy by sheridan first performed in 1775 and revolves around the humorous events that takes place during the saint patrick's day celebration now tuna is another comedy written by sheridan It was first performed in 1775 and became one of the most, one of his most successful works. It tells the story of a young of a young couple trying to overcome obstacles and marry against the wishes of their families. So this is like classic plot of the the restoration comedies, ah, uh, the comedies back during the late end of 18th century. 82nd question. again an assertion reason type statement question statement 1 the book the life of dharma drama completely wrong for you ignore the mistake pardon the book the life of the drama was written by eric bentley statement 2 the book the life of the drama highlights the lives of certain seminal 20th century dramatists uh in the light of the statements given above choose the correct answer from correct option from the given options below statement 1 and 2 are true 1 and 2 are false 1 is true but 2 is false 2 is true but 1 is false any any guesses 82nd question anybody okay you give a no no for this question take a guess mohsin and dishani and uh, uh or i do uh, ashok uh, harida anybody okay let's go with c c is a statement one is true but two is false the life of the drama was written by eric bentley but the second statement is false okay 83rd question louis gracie gibbons a scott square comprises the following books so uh um, this is actually a trilogy written by the scottish writer uh lg gibbon gibbon's trilogy is titled the scott square but it comprises of which of the given works sunset song brothers and sisters cloud home men and wives grey granite can you take a guess anybody 83rd question since long you've guessed been some time since you made a guess give me the answer or take a guess 83rd question c let's go with c but c is not the right answer it's b a c and d a uh, sunset song cloud how and grey granite these are the books comprised in the scott square trilogy which of the following works are written by john dennis the advancement and reformation of modern poetry the christian hero the grounds of criticism in poetry the conscious lovers an essay on the genius and writings of shakespeare which among the following are written by john dennis john dennis was a uh, critic uh, english critic and dramatist 
who wrote uh, during the second half of 17th century and the first half of 18th century john dennis so guess the answer take a guess uh we'll go with b it's if b is answer b is answer a c and d the advancement and reformation of modern poetry uh the grounds of criticism in poetry and uh, an essay on the genius and writings of shakespeare are written by john dennis the english critic and dramatic 85th question we have six more questions criticism is statement guess statement one criticism is the construction of a judgment see read along with me let's let's learn how to answer such questions criticism is the construction of a judgment about the negative or positive qualities of someone or something criticism is a construction of a judgment whether that is negative or positive the construction of a judgment about something that was uh, statement 1 statement 2 criticism can be theoretical practical uh im impress pardon my pronunciation i am i am really bad with comprehending words uh impressionistic effective perspective or the descriptive see how to answer this question statement 1 is right why what then is criticism what else is criticism this is criticism criticism is when you comment on something let's say you take the movie oppenheimer for example or right, let's let's get an example of oppenheimer see okay no wait i'll come to that mushina hold on oppenheimer for example oppenheimer is a movie now i like this movie or i don't like this movie cool whether i like this movie or whether i did not like this movie i have an opinion i have a judgment i have an opinion and judgment on something right oppenheimer is a movie that i like i liked oppenheimer because it is x and y i did not like oppenheimer because i i because of these x and y factors whatever is that whatever is that factor maybe whatever that fake factor maybe i have a judgment so that is what criticism is now criticism can be it can be theoretical practical or, or can be of any sort it can be descriptive prescriptive uh i can criticize oppenheimer in any way i want i can maybe i can use a uh, uh or use let's say a uh, racial perspective or, or a perspective of race as a nation or or viewpoint perspective to bring a, a criticism on oppenheimer i am telling that like I, what if i argue that oppenheimer uh did not speak about did not speak from a perspective of a victim from japan or from a japanese point of view it completely eliminates the japanese point of view thereby uh, erasing a uh, history or or covering a history what if i make that kind of argument or what if i go for a more more of a theater perspective i am of the opinion that oppenheimer uh, was a good movie because it entertained people it was a huge entertainment for people who at the theater okay so i can make criticism in any way i want so statement 1 and 2 are correct so when you get uh, such questions igd what is that dishani i didn't understand what that is igd all right so uh, see i can critique a work okay cool typing mistake d okay i can critique a work in any way my point is see when you get questions like this uh, give it some time think about it don't jump into a conclusion do not overthink that is there but do not jump into conclusions take your time and uh come up with an answer no. 86 question arrange the correct chronological sequence of the publication of the following indian books of poems time to change banaras and other poems savitri the golden threshold anthropocene climate change uh konda again and consolation anthropocene climate change contagion and consolation time to change banaras and other poems avitri the golden threshold anthropocene can you can you 
can you arrange this in chronological order anybody okay the correct answer is b the order goes like this the golden threshold published in 1905 very famous written by sarojini naidu savitri i repeat savitri 100 times a class every time i teach i repeat savitri savitri was published in 1950 and it is written by by who wrote savitri aurobindo sri aurobindo aurobindo wrote savitri And then you have time to change published in 16 uh, 1962 and finally and then banaras published in 1967 by kedarnath singh and finally anthropocene climate change contagion and consolation published in 2001 by any guesses if you if you if you give me the answer of the poet 100 points who wrote anthropocene climate change contagion and consolation published in 2001 anybody it is written by sudeep sen sudeep sen is a poet sudeep sen came to the institute from where i did my mphil while i was doing my course and we read po- he read poems and uh, we students read poems back then it was really nice ex- all right 87 question connect lions and shadows the still center translation of agamemnon the sea and the mirror sea and the mirror on the other side you have w h auden louis mcnees stephen spender and christopher isherwood anybody okay for the convenience of uh, viewing the option let's eliminate option d you are left with a b and c anybody can you can you can you connect can you match the following and give me the answer the answer is a uh lion lino uh, lions and shadows was written by <coughs> lions and shadows written by w h auden the still center is written by uh, stephen spender translation of agamemnon is written by uh, louis magnus the sea and the mirror by christopher isherwood all right next uh, next question again match the following humayun kabir uh, babani vattacharya manohar malkonkar kamala markade name of the writers humayun kabir Babani Bhattacharya, Manohar Malgunkar and Kamala Markandaya. On the other side you have a goddess named Gold, Men and Rivers, Combat of Shadows, Possession. Uh, last class, if you have attended, I discuss one, one among these works, Possession by Kamala Markandaya. See, if you know that, you can eliminate option A and B because D is obviously Kamala Markandeya matched to option O, possession. Anybody? So what is the answer? Correct answer is D. Uh, Humayun uh, Kabi wrote Men and Rivers. Babani Bhattacharya wrote Goddess Named Gold. Manohar Mangonka wrote Combat to Shadows. And Kamala Markandeya wrote Possession. All right. 89 question. Parda is a collection of poems by Dash. Parda is a collection of poems by Dash. Adil Jasuwala, Imtia Zarkar, Aha Shahi Deli, Sujada Bhatta. Adil Jasuwala is not the answer because if you again, if you've attended my previous class or the class before that, nowhere we've discussed the work named Parda by Adil Jasuwala. Then same goes with Aha Shahi Deli. that leaves us with b and d is it imtiaz darkar or sujada but musina says okay not not think the inter weight on musina but i assume all of you are guessing imtiaz darkar but yeah imtiaz darkar is the right answer correct imtiaz darkar is the right answer and uh, parda is a collection of poems uh, published in 1989 and uh, delves in the themes of 
identity, culture, gender, and complex dynamics of relationship. The parda refers to the practice of seclusion or veiling so by some women in certain cultures, certain different cultures. So the uh, correct answer is India Zarkar. He wrote parda. Last question before we move to the comprehension question. Nine years question. What is the correct chronological sequence of the following text? The advancement of learning, an apology for poetry, the uses of the spectator, my relations, and how it strikes a contemporary. Can you arrange this in correct chronological order? A. Dishani gives A. Let's can we go with A? He can go with A, but uh, A is not the answer. The answer is B. The order goes like this. First, apology for poetry by 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 dash. Yeah, Sydney is the right answer. Apology for poetry by Sydney. And he wrote this as a response to dash. We discussed that a, like 10, 20 questions ago, we discussed this. Sydney wrote this as a response to Dash. Stephen Golson. He wrote an apology for poetry in 1581. Now, the advancement of learning. I think we discussed this also a few questions before. Who wrote the advancement of learning? Who wrote the Bacon? Francis Bacon. He wrote this in 18, 1605. 1605. Next comes the uses of the spectator. Who wrote, spectator? Who wrote the uses of spectator? Take the word spectator and think. Who wrote the uses of the spectator? Again, we discussed about spectator and the author a few questions ago. Anybody? Spectator is the name of the magazine, the spectator. The publication, the spectator. And who is associated with that spectator? Edison. Joseph Edison wrote the uses of spectator in 1711. And finally, my relations. I'll give you a clue if you can guess. This is written by a writer whose sister is also a writer. He belonged to the Romantic era. Uh, he uh, is known, also known by his pen name, Elia. He wrote essays of it. Charles Lamb is the answer. My relations is written by Charles Lamb, published in the collection Essays of Elia in 1823. This question is very easy because if you can place the, uh, oh, we have one more work. How to strike a contemporary. Who wrote how to strike a contemporary? It was written by the same author who wrote A Room of One's Own. Who is that writer? Virginia Woolf. Vir not Browning, Virginia Woolf. A Room of One's Own is written by Virginia Woolf. And where she argues that the women writer needs to have a room of one's own uh, to sit and write. It's a very uh, strong uh, 20th century feminist argument she puts forward. How to Psyche Contemporary is written by Virginia Woolf in 1923. See, again, if you know the era to which these writers belonged to, it is very easy to uh, place the works in the chronological sequence. So 90 questions and from now we have uh, comprehension questions. See, it's, it's not practical to discuss comprehension questions in a, a live class, but I, ha I, I can give you some tips and suggestions to solve comprehension questions. See, first of all, 10 questions. If, see, every time you have different weightages for uh, different topics, but if there is one area or portion or segment where the weightage uh, doesn't change, it is the comprehension section. 10 questions, 5 questions from poetry and 5 questions from prose, usually. So 10 questions from comprehension is a sure, sure question. No doubt about that. But most of the uh, people who write the exam think that they can go to the exam hall, sit and find the comprehension and uh, I mean solve them easily. So they do not practice. Probably it is in the exam hall that they see the comprehension or attend the comprehension question for the first time. The previous time they would have attended this question was the would be the previous net exam. 
my point is if you want to get 10 out of 10 for comprehension try practicing comprehension take at least the previous year question papers and start solving the comprehension questions Co see what exactly is being tested in a comprehension paper it's your ability to read and comprehend so if you want to answer the questions practice and that makes you that will make you better now you might uh, think that more than one answer could be correct so you would be confused on which option you are to tick in these scenarios i would say go with a logical hit uh, think logically think multiple times read the passage thoroughly again uh, read again and again and then come up with an answer practice this is how you solve comprehension questions comprehension questions if you practice and perfect it 10 out of 10 is a sure hit so that takes us to the end of the uh, question paper discussion but before we go i have a few more points to give you see if you take this question paper shift 1 uh, or shift 1 and to campaign around 40 percentage of the questions were from british literature all right 40 percentage of the questions were from around 40 percentage of questions were from british literature i think 38 i mean this is my calculation it can be plus or minus but let's say 40 percentage of questions were from british literature what does that mean british literature is important starting from probably the age of chaucer to modern english period 21st century it is important second most important uh, segment for, for or area is literary and cultural theory and literary criticism it weights around 25 percentage so 40 plus 25 65 percentage of the questions were from these two areas 10 percentage of the questions if my memory is correct 10 percentage of the questions were from indian english literature so that takes us to 40 plus 25 plus 10 75 percentage of the questions were from these three areas so my point is if you are someone who starting to prepare for ugc net exam or who just begun or on your way then these three areas are extremely important so uh, i just want to tell you that these three areas are very important that takes us to the end of the discussion now if you go to a website which you see on your screen right now you can solve these case, previous year question papers in real time see i'll tell you why solving the question papers in real time is important real time in the sense a fixed amount of time so you can load it here and there you can go away from the laptop or your mobile phone and do something else and then come back and solve the remaining issues you can do that just like how you sit in an exam hall you can sit and solve these questions this is important because this kind of creates a, a real life scenario in accordance with the original ugc net examination so uh you will also know how to deal with time i I've, i've listened to students who complain that they didn't get enough time to complete the uh, you see the, if you if you're clear about what you're doing you can complete the exam in two and a half hours this is from my experience i'm not telling like uh, it it may not be same for everyone but two and a half three hours is more than enough so practice solving the questions in real time so visit our website you can solve this question paper itself from our website so do that uh in a few days we'll come back again to discuss shift 2 of the previous net exam ugc net exam 2023 june shift 2 will be uh discussed live in a few days so i thank all of you for uh, joining this session i hope you um, found this uh informative useful beneficial helpful i thank you uh, for attending the session and see you all thank you guys for watching this video for more such informative content subscribe to our youtube channel and if you guys need an extra help to clear the ugc net exam you can join our courses to know more about our courses reach out to us in this number thank you everyone